Hi, everybody. I'm Kevin Falvey. Welcome to Boating Roundtable. In this episode, we have representatives from Discover Battery to talk to us about lithium ion batteries, their history, and where lithium ion might fit into your boating plans. Joining us today from the Vancouver area, we have Matthew Campbell. Matthew, hello. Hi there, Kevin. Thanks for having us today. You're welcome. Matthew is Director of Digital Marketing. Joining him and joining us is Derek Pettengale. Derek, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Kevin. And you are Director of Product Management, as I understand it. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, and uh, leading the question today will be our Boating Lab Director, Randy Vance. Randy, these two gentlemen are ready for your questions about lithium ion batteries. Frankly, I think that's one of the coolest new um, technologies coming along in the marine industry because of their, the lithium battery's ability to store so much energy, to discharge it in such consistent power, and do it with so little weight in the boat. Talk about your history there first. Sure. Well, thanks. Um, we've been around as a company since 1949. Uh, the company began as a battery distributor in Lethbridge, Alberta. And uh, in the mid 90s, uh, grew uh, to become a, a manufacturer of batteries, not just a distributor. Um, we actually have uh, three manufacturing plants. We have one in China, one in Taiwan, and one in Korea. Um, we really are a global manufacturer with distribution on all continents, uh, with, with the exception probably of Antarctica. Um, our company is headquartered in Vancouver, British Columbia. Um, obviously, we're a bunch of Canadians. Probably the important thing for us to, to really get across is, you know, we manufacture all of our own product. So we're at absolute control over our supply chain. So we don't, uh, you know, we don't rely on white labeled product that uh, a lot of our competitors are doing today. We actually make them ourselves. I've spent a lot of time working on electric propulsion. In fact, I hold the world speed record for the fastest electric boat in the uh, Lake of the Ozark shootout. It was 30 miles an hour, but that was just the boat we had. Um, but propulsion isn't your main thing here. It's coming along, but you guys are into battery power storage for other applications. Let's talk about that. Sure, uh, I'd be happy to. And, and really, we're talking about energy storage, so house loads on on uh, cruising yachts, sailboats, uh, houseboats, uh, that type of thing, uh, uh, particularly uh, where they're connected to an inverter, for example, carrying those kind of loads. That's where uh, you know lithium blue is a drop-in uh, replacement for lead acid deep cycle batteries, so it fits right in there. So you've you've configured the battery to absolutely replace the footprint of a AGM or a wet cell battery. Yeah, that that's um, the particular uh, lithium blue come in uh, uh, a couple sizes. Uh, one is uh, you know a GC12 golf cart 12 size, very common uh, in energy story application, or a G24 size, both footprints easily replace uh, most uh, deep cycle lead acid batteries out, out there um, and fit in their configurations. They come 12, 24 volts, 36 volts. So uh, that's a little bit different than your standard LEDs, but that uh, uh, makes things uh, more interesting, more flexible for uh, installation. So um, yeah, they're, they're right in there. They're lighter weight than those lead acid batteries, which is one of their first advantages that lithium will have. Um, they're about half the weight of a comparable lead acid, same volume, stays high. So they've got about half that weight. Um, and additionally, they, they store about, uh, or you can use uh, uh, about twice as much of the energy. So if you have a 100 amp rated lead battery and a 100 amp lithium battery, uh, um, really uh, the lithium has got double the accessible capacity because you can take that full 100 amps to you know 100% depth of discharge. You're not doing that with lead. It's a 50% uh, you know recommended max discharge on on lead. Uh, so it's, you know a number of differences there in terms of uh, you know same same size, same volume, higher energy density, lower weight. Is there um, any special challenges in managing the power output of lithium batteries? They, they require some uh, special um, attention. Um, essentially, the you know, kind of advantage is that the lithium batteries, particularly ours, the lithium blue has a high, you know, high current BMS in it. So the electronics, uh, lithium batteries have electronics inside them that help govern and manage um, the activity of that battery. 
Um, and so that makes, uh, in, in our case, a uh, high rate charging. That's one of the things consumers will notice very quickly is how fast your lithium battery just uh, charges up really fast, uh, lightning fast. We can go be fully recharged in an hour if you have the right charging equipment on that. Um, they also discharge just as quickly so they can support very large um, and loads and they do it very well with very consistent voltage, um, uh, high voltage on that. So performance is interesting. Um, those things need to be considered uh, when putting it in, in your boat. Um, they're not particularly hard to install, the same tools, et cetera, same process, but understanding how to set up things uh, for that, how to set the charging up. And, and that uh, requires some expertise. And there's a few things you don't wanna do um, in terms of system as well. So recommending a, you know, a professional be involved and assist with that uh, setup. So, so even though you, you do have the same footprint of a AGM or a wet cell battery, you still aren't recommending a guy pull that out, put a new one, put in a lithium battery himself. He would have to be an experienced person. Certainly could do the nuts and bolts. There's nothing there, uh, there that's complicated on that. What we would recommend is, is, is somebody assist with the charging setup. So the charging setup for lithium is different than lead acid. Now you can use a lead acid charger, reuse the charger you have in there. We would, you know, if they have a lithium profile, that's great. Just make the change over that. If not, the device can be customized. I change the, the bulk voltage, the absorption voltage on that to 13.8. Um, uh, no float charge is necessary. You can do that, um, but it's not necessary for, for a lithium. Now, an expert uh, installer would know how to do that. Uh, um, if you can't, uh, if your charger, you're not going to upgrade the charger to lithium just yet. Um, you know, you can use a gel setting. So that's the closest parameters to, to lithium that are, are available with most uh, lead acid chargers. So those kind of things, setting that up. Um, additionally, there's a, a few other things, uh, you know, a li lithium battery shouldn't be used as a starting battery. So it wouldn't be combined, say using a combiner or used as a dual purpose type battery. And that's where the expertise comes in, knowing that and understanding that system, being able to, to set it up correctly and, uh, and, and have it perform with, as to meet expectation. Let's look at propulsion. Are you guys at all involved in marine propulsion? Yeah, yeah, uh, certainly we are. Um, there's, you know, the trolling motor uh, scenarios, quite a lot of people out fishing using trolling motors position. Lithium blue is a deep cycle uh, replacement battery. It fits that uh, profile for that type of parameter and for, for fitting in the space there. So we work with that. Um, interestingly, we, we have uh, two ways we can approach that. There's the more traditional uh, installing 12 volt batteries in series um, and charging each one by a single channel. So they have multi-channel multi chargers for that application. If the profile for lithium can be used, they can be set up in that series uh, up to 48 volts um, in series for that. But we also offer batteries that are actually 24 volts and 36 volts at terminal. That's a little different than the traditional LEDs. So um, the advantage there is getting more density, higher energy density in the same spot. And also you, you can pair those up for the capacity and you won't have the same issues uh, at balancing the, between the batteries. If you go all 36 volt batteries in parallel, then rather than doing 12 volt in series to get there. So balancing is more complicated in, in single batteries in series versus one, one battery at nominal voltage. So there's an advantage of that and that lithium can do that. And there we have batteries that are offered at that voltage. Well, since you brought that up, you know, we've, we've discussed a project where we're going to, I'm currently running um, on my, uh, 25 foot bay boat, I'm running a um, 36 volt trolling motor. Now we've talked about swapping out the three AGM batteries that run the trolling motor for two 36 volt yeah. batteries. Talk to me about the kind of advantages one could expect if they were making that kind of a revision to their boat. If you're putting two 26 volts in you, there, you're gonna replace three 12 volts. So immediately the footprint's gonna be a little bit, a bit smaller uh, space but you're gonna find that you have more accessible 
energy, you would be accessible only say 50% of each one of those 12 volts uh, batteries there. But with the, the two lithium blue in there at 36, you get 100% of that. Um, that's about 25% more capacity just there and available to you by, by going that route. Um, also moving from a, a series situation to um, paralleling at 36 volts, the balancing between the batteries is going to be much, much better, much truer. You're going to find they'll be out of, uh, out of balance less, a lot less than, than would your uh, 312s in series. So that's kind of interesting. Um, you know, it's, it's a, little, a little bit different installation for you, but I, I don't think it'll be any problem to make the, the switch and there'll be some, uh, some advantages on, uh, for you there. I want to talk about the economy of lithium versus uh, traditional cell batteries. Why don't you guys speak to that? Because that's probably more your area of expertise than mine. Yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, the, the total, what we call the total cost of ownership of lithium in, in, in the end is, is much, much less than, than lead acid. That, that's an attractive consumer. It's a little hard to understand that at first because the lithium battery costs sticker price is a lot more than a lead acid battery. And so you, you have to understand a bit that A, with a, a lithium battery, with a, our lithium blue battery, you're getting that 100% of the capacity of the batteries available to you versus half of the lead acid. So immediately you would have to double your, your lead acid purchase to get an equivalent capacity to, to one lithium. But the lithium lasts so much longer than lead acid. If you look at a lead acid AGM, they're typically rated 400 cycles over their life. By cycle, you mean charge and recharge? Yeah, cycle, charge and recharge. But right. for a lithium a battery, you know, charge and recharge cycles are up 4,000, so 10 times as many. So ultimately, you're going to have to buy 10 sets of lead batteries um, to, to equal one set of lithium batteries. One of the advantages that I see to the lithium battery is, is that I get 100% output all the way through. If I'm using an AGM and I'm using my trolling motor on spot lock, for instance, that's putting out a lot of power to hold me over a spot, especially if I'm in certain amount of seas and current. And after an hour of that, the battery just loses its ability to do that because once you've lost 20% of your power uh, or used 20% of your power, it can't keep up with the current anymore. So you know, that's a, an interesting observation. Let me give you a little explanation of why that is. Uh, a lithium, uh, lithium ion battery is a higher voltage to start with than a, than a lead acid battery. Uh, typically we're nominal around 13.8 volts uh, versus something in the lower 12s uh, for lead acid uh, there. But uh, lithium ion holds that voltage much, much longer, the slope as it declines uh, or as its consumed, energy is consumed is, is very, very low uh, compared to lead acid. So it holds the voltage a much longer period. The, the, at the end, the drop off is, is, is quite sudden. Like when you get to the end of, of a usable capacity and usable energy, uh, you know, the voltage drops, but uh, it's much, much slower than that. So you get that nice firm holdup over a period of time. Um, that also brings some interesting challenges and advantages uh, to lithium um, because it's doing, you know, because it's like that, it's, it would be hard to monitor using an external device to say to monitor state of charge, but um, it, it, it offers a very predictable, um, uh, very predictable state of charge because of the digital capacity or capability of the, the BMS in that battery. Um, and you can see, and you can read that information, you can get very precise state of charge information off of a lithium ion battery using digital uh, BMS. Um, we have a, a Bluetooth app that provides that to user's phone or, or iPad or something like that. So it's very, very easy for them to see the state of charge of every battery, each battery that they have. You know, very, very simple compared to what, and get that, you know, long hold up uh, and, str and strong power right to the end of, uh, of the usable capacity. How does it talk to the battery? Is it Bluetooth or Wi-Fi? Yeah, Bluetooth. Uh, it's using the Bluetooth technology. So it, it, it's paired with each battery in there. And you go through 
uh, however many batteries you have on your boat there, you look at each one and provide state of charge, which is the most important uh, piece of information anybody wants. It's very accurate because it's all digital. Uh, the digital BMS, the battery management system, tracks all that information. It will also provide uh, diagnostic information uh, for for the, uh, the technical person who needs to do some uh, some uh, you know uh, troubleshooting or something. Have a look at it. So it's very it's actually very sophisticated, but very easy and simple to understand uh, uh, application. One of the ways that you add performance to any boat is to take out weight, and when you're taking out three. AGM batteries that basically are going to weigh 75 pounds a piece. You're basically taking out one great big guy. Yeah. And in, in our tests, Kevin and I run the, on all kinds of boats all the time. You take out a man and you usually gain a mile an hour. So you're adding performance to your boat by reducing weight. Would I be correct in saying that? Oh, absolutely. That's one of the great things about uh, lithium batteries, you know, twice the amount of, of uh, available energy at half the weight. Just try picking one up. I mean, it's quite a, an amazing difference. If you've ever lifted lead battery, I man, get uh, a lithium battery, pick it up. It's it's incredibly lighter. It's a surprising, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great kind of thing. Um, we even put a handle on our battery to make it even easier. Like, it's just, it, you know, they're designed to be moved around. Like the, it's, it's great um, for boaters, uh, for trailer weights. It's great to reduce your trailer weight a little bit too. If, you, uh, if your boat's trailered uh, uh, with a, you know, lighter weight battery, yeah, weight can be great. And Randy, in a larger boat, you know, cruising boat, larger sport fishing boat, you know, the house bank of lead acid batteries is extremely heavy. As a former boatyard worker, as a kid crawling in a bilge, pulling out all those golf cart batteries out of a 40 footer, man, that's some work. <laughs> you, know, you, can put in, you can look at it two ways. Your batteries are 100% usable, lithium ion, 100% discharge. So for the same footprint, I get double the power. Or I can have half the footprint and the same power, Right. which means about half the weight or, or even, even well, less than half the weight. weight. And, and, and Am I correct in that assessment? Is that a correct way to put it? Absolutely. You, you know, it, it's... Uh, it's, it's, if you use the same footprint as your lead, you're getting double the capacity at half the weight. But if you want to maintain the same capacity, or you're, you're probably even less than half the weight, and you might even gain some some space back on your boat, you can use to store something else. I take the footprint and double my can capacity. Can I can I do away with a generator? I mean, I know some boat companies are actually offering this. You know, no more generator. They're offering. You know, I, I, and I don't know the systems yet. I'm not that uh, conversant in it. I'm, is, that a, is that an option? Is that something you're pushing? I wouldn't abandon my, my generator, but you can sure expect to use it a lot less. Um, you know, one, of the, one of the advantages we talked about earlier there was the, the fast rate at which the lithium battery will charge um, and getting it charged in one hour. Um, that's going to utilize any generator runtime, for example, or time you're plugged into shore power. Uh, that's one hour. Um, if you were looking at a lead, it would be three, three to five times as long to replace the energy. And wow. so you would have to run that generator, pay for the fuel, et cetera, or be plugged in, stuck at home, waiting for it to charge up. Um, that's one of the advantages, faster charger. Um, you know, I think that there are advantages to having a generator around. Maybe you need a smaller one and you're certainly going to use it a lot less. Uh, that part we can, we can tell you. You know, to expect. Now, that would actually be nice to be able to pop in a smaller generator, burn less fuel on it, and uh, it cost less to buy. Cost less, less to buy, less weight, you, you know, <laughs> less of many things that you, you didn't it's want. Like, it's like a whole design spiral thing because you need less, you know, you can go less, less, less fuel, smaller generator, less money. It's, uh, it's like dominoes in a positive right. way. One of the things that degrades a marine battery or battery in marine service is vibration. Unlike a land vehicle, there are no shock absorbers. Every time my boat comes off a wave, the internals of that battery is taking a shock. It's good at riding a boat as you or I may have. Um, is lithium better, worse, or about the same with regards to degradation due to vibration as a lead acid battery? Yeah, I would say for a top quality lithium battery, and I've put ours in, in that category, it, it's no problem. We, we use um, a cell structure in there and we have what we call a cradle in there. there there's, there's no room for movement on that. That battery is going to do better in vibration than, than with many lead acids on them. 
but be careful like you're looking at other lead acid or sorry lithium batteries out there i've seen some horribly constructed ones uh that use tape to hold the cells in position and things like that that would not be a good choice for for a boater so pay attention to the quality of the construction of the lithium battery or, and, and you know from our battery the lithium blue battery i, I can assure you it's the the best cradling system and best packing that you're going to find out there one thing um, we've seen a lot in competitive product is they've actually taken a traditional battery casing and have actually put the lithium cells inside of, a, of an already designed and developed case where we've actually designed and developed the case around the cells. So it's actually made specifically for the lithium cells. It just happens that we're able to make it in the in the cell in the the, the case formats that would replace a, a lead acid battery very easily of the same size. But that's a real differentiator with how we've manufactured our battery over what we've seen when we've torn apart some competitor uh, some competitor lithium batteries. Well, that kind of efficiency in manufacturing has to come from quite a bit of experience. Let's talk about that. You guys probably have more. Um, engineering capacity in this arena than most anybody we've spoken to as of yet. Yeah, I mean, we've got, uh, listen, as far as the marine space is concerned, we've been in that business for some time. Um, we make all kinds of different batteries for different purposes. So, you know, a, a gasoline starting or a dual purpose battery, uh, batteries for diesel engines and dual purpose house bank batteries, as we can understand, as well as, uh, you know, batteries for trolling motors. Uh, the majority of our business, in fact, um, has been in the lead acid space. So, you know, we've, we've talked a lot about lithium and we're talking about lithium here specifically today, but it should be noted that, you know, we are a lead acid battery manufacturer as well. And we've got, uh, you know, a, a line that we call our mixed tech battery that is really a starting and dual purpose battery. Uh, that it's a it's a actually a patented and award-winning design battery that uh, uses the the natural motion of your vessel to mix the acid inside the battery, which actually prolongs uh, prolongs the the battery's life uh, and prevents acid stratification, which is the number one cause of a battery dying over time. Uh, we do make a, a dry cell AGM battery. Um, so we do have those as well as, and we've mentioned, uh, the, the gel settings, we do make a gel battery as well. And of course, uh, you know, lithium is, uh, is not new to us as, as, as we've mentioned, we've been in the energy storage space and solar with lithium for, you know, over 10 years now. And, uh, uh, so that's, none of that's new to us. And we've been really manufacturing since the uh, battery since the mid nineties. So we've got lots of experience. Lots of know-how. We've got a, a brilliant engineering team that's designed and, and developed all of our uh, lithium battery um, technologies, and our and as Derek has mentioned, our battery management system. Um, so lots and lots of history there. How's the electronic brain fit in the battery? Is that a module that can be replaced, or it, it, interesting? It can be. Well, let's hope it's not. Um, we're we have a kind of an additional feature built into our battery of a small fuse uh, that it's attached to the uh, positive post of the, of the battery that protects the BMS inside. That little fuse is replaceable, is very inexpensive um, compared to the BMS uh, underneath the, the lid of the, the battery, much more expensive uh, device to, to uh, replace or take care of. So there's a fuse on that, but the bar board um, is underneath the top. It's a high current design. Uh, lots of metal involved in that, uh, solid state fuses and FETs in that uh, for switching. Um, it does have a mechanical relay in it. All of it's very, very robustly uh, designed, very suitable for a marine high vibration uh, and, and environment. Um, BMS design is really what we focus and put a lot of energy into a, a Discover battery. Now, now much of the conversation that I've heard in with respect to electric propulsion in, in both marine and automotive is regarding safety. How do you guys address that question? Well, that's, a, that's obviously a very important cost, uh, question to any consumer safety. Uh, people have heard a lot of things about lithium batteries, uh, uh, but the technology has uh, matured greatly. And, 
And specifically, we've made uh, design choices to maximize the safety of our, of our batteries. In particular, we've chosen lithium ion phosphate cells as the cells to use it because they're the safest uh, uh, lithium technology out there. There's many different types of cells. Um, lithium ion phosphate are quite different than the cells used in automobile be uh, battery packs and electric vehicles and so on. So the, the, the energy capacity, et cetera, on that is slightly different and much, much safer environment. We also design that BMS that manages uh, the battery and it manages the safety around that, disconnecting the battery, preventing it from being overcharged, et cetera, et cetera on that really helps uh, a lot on the battery. Um, we're, we're fortunate we don't, we don't uh, have uh, events uh, around our batteries, et cetera, so we consider them to be very, very safe for a consumer. We wouldn't go into a consumer market if we didn't think these batteries were safe for use. One of the marks of, uh, of quality is longevity, and one of the measurements of longevity is the uh, terms of your warranty. Where can we find the warranty on your batteries? Hey, that's a very interesting uh, connection. That's a, a question, and also, um, you know, something that we do a little different uh, than another battery suppliers on there. So the actual warranty is posted on our website. Please have a look on, on that. No, uh, there's nothing to hide there. But what I'll tell you about it that is different. Um, we have a full replacement uh, a portion of, of the warranty, so we'll replace the battery. It's not prorated as is often found in the lead acid world. Um, you know, we we replace that a battery. Uh, you know, under the period of time. But more importantly, we guarantee the performance. I don't know too many devices out there that come with a performance guarantee, but we're able to do that. Um, and, and say that there's so much energy throughput represented by the sum of charge and discharge through the battery. We can measure that because we have a digital BMS in there. So we know that uh, the consumer will be fully informed as to how much energy they put through their battery, et cetera. So they know it's going to work and do what a battery is supposed to do. That's quite a bit different than, than the other guys out there offering, you know, uh, por, you know, prorated replacements or number of cycles and, you know, how do people count all that. Um, we, we actually have a digital number you can uh, measure and, you, you know, there's a guarantee around how much uh, energy is going to go through that battery. In fact, I think uh, just to add to that, Derek, is uh, as far as we're aware, we're the only battery manufacturer with that type of a performance guarantee on their lithium batteries. So that makes us very unique. Well, I'm looking forward to my test of the batteries and reporting on the results of that, um, especially now after all the things we've learned here today. I appreciate you guys coming out. Thanks, Randy and Kevin. We really appreciate being here today and uh, being able to talk about our battery and, and obviously the ins and outs of uh, why a lithium battery over a lead acid. So thanks for the opportunity. We, we obviously are, are thankful to be here and happy to answer answer anything else if there's anything further in the future. Well, I think we can close. So Derek Pettengill, thank you very much. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Discover Batteries for sharing your knowledge of lithium ion batteries with our audience here today. Please be sure to check out their website at discoverbatteries.com. You can look for that information in the comments section below. Uh, also check out bodymag.com and remember to subscribe to our channel. Until next time, for Boating Roundtable, with Randy Vance, I'm Kevin Falvey.